Alright, well, well, is in the record books, and you know what's going to mix. Roll that damn intro. Well, the Royal Rumble is in the record books, and you know what's going to mix? Roll that damn intro. Alright, so I'm going to get right down into it and then talk about my thoughts overall as a whole, what I thought about the Royal Rumble, and you can be sure to talk about it with me in the comments. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay notified for all of my videos. And let's get right down into it. And we actually had two matches on the kickoff. It was a two hour kickoff, so that was a little bit different. I su basically was surprised that there wasn't more kickoff matches, but the first one that we did have where we had a returning Sheamus taking on Shorty G on this one. Still weird that Chad Gable's now Shorty G, but it is what it is, and Sheamus was able to get his win, and that's cool, so can't really go wrong with that. Uh, the United States Championship, which was actually on the kickoff on Dryday and as well a returning Alberto Carrillo, basically being laid out by Andrade uh, a while back and being laid out, you know, on the arena floor and everything. So we haven't seen him for quite some time, returned and attacked Andrade. But for this one, however, for the United States Championship and Andrade, St. Amos is still United States Champion. Can't go wrong with that, really. I'm sure the feud is most likely going to continue, and we'll see another match. Probably even a matchup leading into WrestleMania with the feud, so who knows, we'll see. Then we get into, of course, the main card, everything else for the Royal Rumble, and where we had Roman Reigns and King Corbin basically going at it. Anything goes in this one in the street fight, if you will. And this one really surprised me on the amount of stuff that they actually did in this match. Basically seeing it all to the interaction, which is awesome by the Usos. Uh, Robert Rudy and Dawson Ziggler obviously getting their nose involved as well, trying to help out King Corbin and everything. So pretty crazy intense spots. Even where they had the international announce team, that was funny and that was cool. Seeing the table spot there and everything. And for the finish, which was pretty interesting where we had it. Uh, where Roman Reigns was able to, I believe, spear King Corbin on top of the dugout, and that's really cool since they were in Houston and Houston Astrodome. Um, they, I think it's called, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but right there in the arena as well. So that's a really cool scene. Uh, WWE actually in baseball parks now. I don't know what other ones they're going to be in, so that'll be curious to see where things go. But after everything that Roman Reigns has been through, he was able to finally get his payback since what happened with the whole dog food incident. I was there seeing it unfold and everything for WWE Fayetteville and SmackDown just last month. So, Roman Reigns getting his win, that's good in my book. And then we get right into the Women's War Rumble. Not gonna, well, I'll see if I can try and name everyone who is. And it and everything where we had the likes of Alexa Bliss going in at number one and number two, surprisingly being Bianca Blair and I wouldn't have been against her winning the Royal Rumble match and everything that would have been pretty cool and she had a really strong showing so that was really insane. She eliminated quite a amount of people. Uh where we had the return of Mighty Miley. Mighty Miley was dope seeing her. That was really cool. Uh, of course, we had Nikki Cross, Lana had to get involved, obviously. Uh, we had Mercedes Martinez, who just recently signed with NXT, so 
really nice seeing her. Uh, Liv Morgan was able to be in there, of course, have her interaction with Lana and everything. Uh, so there is that. Uh, Mandy Rose was there, obviously. Uh, Candice LeRae, Sonya Deville, Carrie St. Miriam, that's a cool one. Nice to see there, see her there. Uh, Dana Brooke, uh, we had Tamina in the rare appearance, basically. Don't really see her too much, which is really weird. Uh, where we also had Dakota Kai and everything. I was hoping she would have an interaction with Tegan Knox. That didn't really happen, unfortunately. Uh, and that uh, we had the hot mess Chelsea Green, so that was cool, and even though she didn't last too long, which is unfortunate. Obviously, Charlotte Flair and that um, returning Naomi, that was nice to see Naomi come back and hopefully see her get into the mix more of what's going on with SmackDown in the women's division. Beth Phoenix really looked awesome in this one and could have had a chance at actually winning and everything. And I loved her interaction with Tally, who was also in this one. So that was cool seeing them together. Uh, we had Tony Storm, Tony Time, really cool. Kelly Kelly as well. Uh, Sarah Logan, Natalia, Zaya Lee, interesting. And Zelina Vega again. Uh, Shotzi Blackheart also surprised me from NXT since she was in that Battle Royal not too long ago on NXT and everything. So there's that. Of course, Carmella, Tegan Knox. Santina Marella, that was funny, that was cool. You know, can't go wrong with that, even though it's Santino, but still, Santina, you get the picture, basically. And, of course, Shayna Baszler, which was one of my picks, but also Charlotte Flair one, so... I'm not really mad at it. Might be an unpopular opinion on that, but hey, it was gonna happen at some point. I know we'll probably see Charlotte Flair and Becky unless something happens between now I know they have the Saudi show, which is really weird that they retired fast lane. Don't know, know why they even did that, but things change. And now we got the Saudi show and Elimination Chamber that was brought to my attention on Twitter. So that was really weird. But Charlotte Flair ended up winning the Women's War Rumble. I was looking forward to this one the most. You know, it wasn't too bad. Could have been better, but Charlotte winning. I'm not really mad at it, that's just me. But what do you think is me happening anyway? Then we get into the next match where we had the Universal Championship on the line between The Fiend and as well for Daniel Bryan. This one was in the strap match, I did not expect that. It could have went either or, but The Fiend was able to win and I really like The Fiend's championship. It sucks that we don't get to see it as much. Just like a rare treat or whatever, but I wonder what they're gonna really do next and everything to continue this. We'll see what happens with that, so that remains to be seen there. Then we get into with the next match, of course, we also had Bailey and as well going at this one with Lacey Evans. And Lacey Evans has been really glowing on me as the play, especially being as a face. I actually like her more as a face more than as a heel and everything, so hopefully that stick around and stuff. But she didn't really, however, get her chance to, you know, get the win. Unfortunately, Bailey was able to retain, so in a way, we'll see what happens with this, and I'm sure it'll probably continue and everything. So there was that and everything else in terms of the SmackDown Women's Championship too. Before I get into the next match where we had the Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch and Asuka, a rematch from last year's Royal Rumble. This time Asuka is one half of the Women's Tag Team Champions with Carrie Sane who was out there in support and everything. And Becky Lynch really wanting to try so hard to defeat Asuka. Asuka tried to come back and everything, feeling confident. We almost saw the mist, but Becky Lynch was able to kick the mist out of Asuka, so that was cool. And Becky Lynch was able to win. So, that remains to be seen. Is it going to be Becky and Charlotte? Again, maybe something happened. I don't really know. I know Charlotte has a choice now, whether it be Raw or SmackDown. Or maybe some completely different, but that remains to be seen there. But Becky Lynch was able to finally get her payback and everything. And then... We move on into, of course, the main event, Men's Royal Rumble. And with this one, of course, Brock Lesnar having to be number one 
and it wasn't for the title so that made it really that much more confusing and if you won that would have been really just as weird it was just crazy but he was going through basically everybody at this point when we saw Elias he was able to go through Elias, Eric Rowan, Robert Roode, John Morrison which I feel like he should have lasted a little bit longer against Brock that's just me at least Kofi Kingston was trying to and able to get some revenge after losing to Brock Lesnar so I still want to see that rematch definitely for sure uh, also we have Rey Mysterio able to get his payback dealing with Brock Lesnar we have Big E in there Cesaro didn't last far too long which was a little unfortunate Shelton Benjamin could have had his chance of finally being WWE Champion and being a contender and the winner of the Royal Rumble but he decided to be with Brock Lesnar since they're friends and stuff, but that didn't last long. Even since since they knocked him more, which is crazy. We had a returning MVP, which was cool. Unfortunately, he didn't last too long. Still dope really seeing him. Long ass time. Uh, Keith Lee was sick. That was cool seeing him there in the Royal Rumble as well. Uh, where we had uh, Braun Strowman and everything. You know, could have eliminated Brock Lesnar. You would have thought he would have, but not really. That was crazy. Uh, Ricochet, Andrew McIntyre took those two to actually eliminate Brock, and then things really picked up from there. We had the Miz go out there, as well as AJ Styles, Styles Ziggler, Carl Anderson, and Max. Yes, a returning Edge. That was a dope moment. <clears throat> Seeing Edge. Being able to reunite with Randy Orton, rated RKO, which Randy Orton was in there and everything, so that was really cool. Uh, Roman Reigns was there, Kevin Owens, Aleister Black, Samoa Joe, and Seth Rollins, of course, the Monday Night Messiah, and everything with Authors of Pain and Buddy Murphy trying to help out Seth Rollins. Unfortunately, that didn't happen, but in the end, who did we did have, and that is Drew McIntyre actually running the whole damn thing, and that was about time actually and now it's looking to be Drew McIntyre and Brock Lesnar at Wrestlemania at least that's how I see it so <clears throat> that's pretty crazy on how Drew McIntyre was able to win so you have Charlotte Flair winning for the women's and Drew McIntyre winning for the men's respect the Royal Rumbles what are your thoughts and opinions on that so Royal Rumble it was good it was solid it wasn't as good as Worlds Collide but I still enjoyed it. I was surprised on the outcome of the Men's War Rumble since I was looking forward to the Women's War Rumble the most. And I was really surprised at how well the Men's War Rumble turned out and at least Brock Lesnar didn't win on that. But he's looking to face Drew McIntyre so that should be really interesting to see. So those are my thoughts. What are yours? Leave it in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Whatever the hell the next video may be, until then, catch you guys and see ya and peace. <laughs>